Hey guys, yeah, McGann, and welcome back to another episode of There I Read It, where I am going over the Harry Potter books chapter by chapter for the first time ever in my life. And yeah, that means I pretty much have some cringy opinions that may or may not change over time. Today we are on chapter 13 of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and this is Gryffindor versus Ravenclaw, or maybe Ravenclaw versus Gryffindor, one of those two. It is mostly about a Quidditch match. And even though reading about sport type things usually makes my brain glaze over and I can't pay attention very well, it wasn't so bad with this chapter. But getting into my noty notes, at the end of the last chapter, Ron went into his room and found orange hair and Scabbers was missing. So it has been come to assume that Hermione's cat Crookshanks ate Scabbers, which he's been trying to do for the entire book. So no big surprise. So now Ron and Hermione are at complete odds with each other over the whole Scabbers versus Crookshanks thing. And it's like Ron wants to be upset. It's not just that he's grieving and he's trying to get over it. It's like he wants to be mad. And even Fred and George can't cheer Ron up. So Harry steps in and offers to let Ron ride on his firebolt broom. And it gets explained that after a few years, a Nimbus brand of broom will start to develop a drag. And I'm just like, why? Why are brooms like phones or computers? That doesn't really make sense. They're magic. Keep them in good shape. And the Ravenclaw team only has one female player, that is their seeker, Cho Chang, and she is a fourth year, so she is one year above Harry right now. But the game hasn't started yet, they're still practicing, and this is Harry's first practice with his firebolt, so he's very excited, and he is really making a show. Like, the practice goes amazing, and everybody else is just all pumped up and doing great because Harry's doing great, and Harry just keeps catching that snitch so easily with that new broom. And Madame Hooch, who is supervising all the practices now, falls asleep in the bleachers. And that's interesting to me because Madame Hooch had been holding the firebolt and talking about different things like the Nimbus and the drag. So I wonder if that sleeping might be a side effect from the broom. Like maybe it does have some subtle curse that nobody was able to pick up on. But practice ends, Ron gets on the firebolt and he flies around until it's dark out. And then when the boys are headed back to the castle, Harry hears something and then Ron illuminates it to find out that it's Crookshanks outside in the dark. And Ron's just furious yelling at Crookshanks and I mean, I get it. I get that he's younger and I get even adults that want to displace blame and point the finger at whoever they can so it's not their fault. But can we just stop and talk for a minute about how Scabbers getting eaten is completely Ron's fault? You know, Anna Animals like a cat or a dog or an elephant, they're not really animals that are expected to be caged all the time. There might be situations like the train ride where you need to have them caged, but generally speaking, they are animals that go free-ish within certain boundaries. Rats, on the other hand, have no business not being kept in a cage. And I understand Ron loves his rat, he wants to carry his rat around, the rat goes in its pockets and all this stuff, which is very unhealthy hygienic and gross, by the way. I used to have tons of pet mice and they poop like every three minutes. But when Ron is not with Scabbers, Scabbers should have been completely caged off and kept safe somewhere, especially if Ron was worried about a cat. And the other thing is that rats are not on the approved list of Hogwarts materials, and I, I think this is the exact reason for it. The entry letter to Hogwarts says you can bring a toad, an owl, or a cat. Now, cats are going to eat things. They are predatory. So telling students, hey, yeah, it's okay if you bring in a rat or a mouse is a bad idea because cats eat rats and mice. So Ron not following the rules is what caused this situation in the first place, and then he doubly caused it by not getting in a cage. Yeah, that's the thing too is Ron even says towards the beginning of the book that Scabbers is just a normal rat, like a garden rat or something. He's not a magical rat. So why would he not think that that kind of a creature needs a home to stay in that's safe and secure? Think boy. Wizards and their lack of logic, I swear. Although that does make a strange counter argument because if the Hogwarts letter lists cats but not rats because of the obvious I'm gonna eat you issue, then that does show some logic and foresight on the part of wizards, so um, another contradiction there. Plus, come on, Hermione cannot be the only person in all of Gryffindor to own a cat. And I'm not disagreeing that it wasn't Crookshanks that made Scabbers disappear because his orange hair was obviously a 
significant enough trait that they keep talking about it. But when you're allowed to pick from three creatures, I'm sure plenty of kids around have a cat, so this shouldn't be a new issue for Ron. Anyways, apparently Percy is still dating Penelope Clearwater, who got petrified in the last book. Oh, but she's unpetrified now, in case anybody forgot about that. She's fine. But now the Quidditch match is about to start, and Harry sees Cho, and she smiles at him, and that makes Harry get a stomach jolt, which obviously he doesn't know the right words, but he's getting like little butterflies in his stomach because he's crushing on Cho. And actually, I think what kept me invested in this particular Quidditch game and not glazing over in my brain is Lee Jordan. Lee is up in that announcer booth just sending out a huge love letter to the Firebolt. And even McGarnagle starts to get irate, like, are you getting paid to make this ad for the Firebolt people? And then just like Harry was afraid of, three Dementors show up on the field during the match. And kind of without missing a beat, Harry just pulls his wand out and screams, Expecto Patronum! And sends something their way, but he doesn't even really flinch or stop to look. He is just so focused on getting that snitch that nothing is going to stop him. And it turns out that Harry handled those Dementors so well because they were actually Malfoy, Crab, and Goyle with, oh, also Marcus Flint, which is the captain of the Slytherin Quidditch team. Yes, I think I'm putting things together now. But Gryffindor wins. There is a huge party up in Gryffindor Tower, except Hermione is not participating because she has to read 422 pages of Home Life and Social Habits of British Muggles. What? And I totally get it. I understand Hermione here. She took muggle studies because she wanted that counter perspective. You know, how did they see my people? But surely, surely she does not have to read the books. I mean, I can remember taking Japanese history classes in college and there were actual Japanese students in that class. I guess they figured it would be an easy A, but the professor was like, oh, I don't know how comfortable I am with this because you guys might tell me all the things that I'm doing wrong. And I feel like whatever professor is doing muggle studies is not gonna just call Hermione a liar if she says no no it's actually like this. So it's just weird to me that Hermione feels the need to work so hard to get answers right based on what a third party thinks about her universe, her reality. But overall, Harry is really ready to just move on and be friends with Hermione again, and Ron is kind of there, he's kind of on the line, but he's just holding on to the super grudge because he doesn't feel like Hermione's sorry. But on the flip side of that, I think Hermione feels so guilty and ashamed that she just doesn't know how to deal with that and doesn't know what to say. And not that that's great, but somebody's got to be the person who says, you know, hey, let's bury this hatchet. And I'm not sure who it's going to be because they're both pretty stubborn. But then the boys go to bed and Ron wakes up screaming in terror because Sirius Black had slashed his curtains. Or I guess I should clarify his bed curtains because they have those weird poster canopy kind of beds. And everybody thinks that Ron just had some nightmare and that it's not serious, it's not real. And even McGarnagle's like, oh, come on, Weasley, you know, this couldn't have happened. And so they all go to ask Sir Cardigan, who is the painting guarding the Gryffindor entrance, like, hey, did you let somebody in? He's like, yes, ma'am, I did, because he had all the passwords written down. So then McGarnagal walks back into the Gryffindor common room, just furious. And of course, everybody's awake now because Ron was freaking out. And she's just like, who wrote down all these passwords and then left it lying around? And poor sweet Nevsy baby, <laughs> Neville's just like, it was me. And that's the end of the chapter. And uh, I hope that Neville does not end up uh, murdered or <laughs> expelled over this. But it is interesting that Sirius Black got so much right, like right down to the room that Harry was staying in. And then he picked the wrong bed to get into. And why would he be slashing at the curtains? If you're trying to kill somebody or abduct them, don't you want to do it as quietly as possible so that nobody is aroused around them? I don't know, but I guess we'll find out in the next chapter. So thank you guys for sitting in and listening to me ramble on like a crazy person. And I guess we'll see soon what's going on in the next chapter. See you later. Don't forget to subscribe, share, whatever you want to do. Comments are especially fun for these videos, but bye! Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram 
as my own personal self. And I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey McGann, I wanna mail you something. How do I do that? Easy, just click the about tab on my channel page and my most current PO box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video, we should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members.